cloudy it's outlet here I have a cold so I'm sorry if I sound all bleh. but that's pretty much how I feel and so I'm wearing my fluffy bad wolf hat to keep me nice and warm um, I've just finished watching the rebel fish episode which was kind of bizarre for anybody who'd ever seen um, party animals with Matt Smith in it because the lady who was the main bad fish slash normal woman um, Miranda I think her name was in this episode plays Joe Porter in um, the party animals and she's the boss that Matt Smith's character Danny Foster works for so it was very they had that similar chemistry again and I was like whoa the incestuous nature of British actors it's so fun because the other guy the brunette rebel fish guy, I don't remember names, I'm terrible with names, I'm sorry. He was from a miniseries with Martin Freeman about swapping genders. So, it's crazy mixed up sort of crossovers, which was kind of fun. Um, it was a good episode, I liked it. It's like, it seems like Doctor Who's back on its normalish path. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. Um, definitely liked the way Matthew wrote, it was good. Um, the rebel fish are a very interesting idea. I'm, I'm going to assume that we get told more about why they're called fish next part of this episode because to me they just seem more like doppelgangers. And as an Australian, it was very hard to sit through it to hear them keep saying gangers and and mean doppelganger because um, because it tends to mean either ginger or someone who's rather promiscuous and so they're just like ah oh, the gangers and I was just like oh oh dear it's a bit of a social clash there between England and Australia but that's okay we made it more amusing um, I thought it was really funny and adorable that he had like the snow globe that made his weather predictions or whatnot that was kind of random but one of the joyous things about Eleven is he tends to be rather random um, I thought it was weird that Muse was playing in the TARDIS. Cool, but weird. And the whole pub-like scene they'd set up. But I suppose you've got to chill in the TARDIS, right? It's not all alien killing and stuff. So that's okay. Um, the TARDIS, when it was in distress, sounded a hell of a lot like um, Willy Wonka's everlasting gobstopper making machine. It was like... or what? I, that's a really bad example. But the, yeah, with the crazy colourful things that do like that, and it's the original one, not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Johnny Depp, but Willy Wonka. Yeah, it's sounded almost identical to that, and I was like, I wonder if they used the same sound bite. It was very bizarre. Um, what else did I write about? Notes again. You know me, my notes. It was a very musical episode, really, if you think about it, because we had Muse, and we had Dusty Springfield. It was all very unexpected, very modern. Um... Are we going to assume that now there's a clone? I mean, I haven't seen the part two. I know that part two is aired in England, but I haven't got that yet because Australia. Um, that possibly the clone fish thing, providing it lives, is potentially the Doctor that died? Or is it just future Doctor that's going to die? It's just a theory. Just throwing that out there into the, the world. Um, also, it almost didn't even feel like a real Doctor Who episode because Rory didn't die. It's a miracle, people. Rory, at present, is still alive, which is incredible. And once again, he showed that he is definitely the most compassionate and practical companion that the Doctor has ever had, that I've seen, as a new Who Doctor. I mean, Martha was compassionate, yes, but she was also a bit whingy and, and infatuated with uh, the Doctor. So, I mean, Martha had definitely merit, she was strong, she was very intelligent, but, you know, she wasn't my favourite companion, but she does, she did have merit, um, as does Rory, and I just feel like he showed that again, like, he's caring for Jennifer and the doppelganger Jennifer, and Amy's getting all like, oh, he's flirting with other people, and I was like, you flirt all the time, like, double standards, I hate that, I don't care which way they're doing the the gender, if the male is allowed to flirt but the female isn't, or the female is allowed to flirt but the male isn't, that's just unfair. Like, either... I mean, he wasn't even flirting anyway. Jennifer was being all like, I love you. And he was all like, yeah, well, I'm taken. And he even did the whole, you know, Amy's a lucky girl. And she is, and she's really still not appreciating him in the way that I feel like she should. But, um, as in, I just... She's too flippant about the relationship. Maybe that's the way their relationship works. But I just... 
Hmm. Marital issues can be solved in TARDIS counselling or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, I thought that that was very noble of him to be like, I'm defending her, nobody touch her, stay away from her. That was awesome. Sorry, I momentarily had to stop filming there, so I'll try to piece these together on Windows Movie Maker. Fingers crossed. Oh, speaking of fingernails, I painted them TARDIS blue, but I don't know if you'll be able to tell in this lighting which way. Anyway, I'll go up on my Tumblr, so if anyone's curious to see TARDIS blue nail polish, owlet.tumblr.com, you can see it. Uh, oh, and owlet is with two T's, just to be confusing. I thought it was weird that the power surge and the acid thing, like it was all, I mean, it, was, it made sense, but it was a bit in, in disconnected in some respects. Like now the TARDIS is sunk into the acid, does that mean the TARDIS is going to be cloned, or can the TARDIS not be cloned? But technically it's a living entity. I don't get it. I did think it was cute, he lost his shoes though, bless. Um, he should have sort of monitor that better and I love that he said he was a great Parker because I don't really believe that for a second do you no come on now um I've got something else here okay what on earth is up with this nurse with the eye patch I'm assuming she's some kind of like midwife of future Amy baby giving birthness but it's a bit weird uh it's just a bit annoying as well that we don't have enough information on that and the whole TARDIS pregnancy scan still doing positive, negative, positive, negative. And yeah, I'd like that to be solved soon, but I have a feeling they'll leave it on some kind of massive cliffhanger because Series 6 is almost over, isn't it? Because Moffat's splitting it. I think he is. I, I remember reading that right. And I loved um, the Doctor's terrible accent when he was saying, like, I think he said up north or whatever, and he started to do that weird accent. It was very strange. It reminded me of when the Doctor, Doc Ten, had to do Scottish accent and Rose was like, Ach, oh, tender boot, and it was terrible and hilarious. It's always good to have fun little mockery accents. And also reminded me of Danny Foster's accent from Party Animals, which wasn't that good, but was amusing because Matt tried. Um, so kudos to him for that. What else? I think that's it. I thought... It was adorable and the confidential that they're also freezing and stealing hot water bottles off each other because it looked cold. Like, hey, it's winter, it's almost winter here and it's freezing. And I'm just like, wow, filming in places like that would be ten times worse. So it makes sense that they've got thermal socks and stuff. That's a bit boring. And when we're talking about socks, I think we've descended into the end of this video because really, where can we go from here? To shoes, I guess. But let's not. So that's it. From, I'm sorry it's not succinct, or maybe it's more succinct, who knows, I don't know. I... I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to end it here, I think. Um, and I will see you all next week for another Doctor Who review. Toodles!